it's great to be here. Thank you again for My Society to bring us here. It's amazing to have an opportunity to share what we do in the other side of the world. Um, so Vigin Sabendo is a nonprofit independent um, organization that works in Brazil to empower citizens on like civic tools so they can actively participate in democracy. And the problem that we uh, are trying to solve is the fact that um, citizens are marginalized from the conversation uh, on the decision making, the public policy uh, that affects their lives, um, that generates a culture of lack of oversight and belief in impunity. Um, and that leads to, oh, we know corruption, abuse of power and all of that. And finally, all of this together is what um, makes um, inequality worse and distrust in our institutions, which is one of the main threats to democracy. Um, so Fikin Sabendo's mission is to reduce the power imbalance between society and the state and to create an environment where citizens can participate in the creation of public policies and uh, oversight government resources. Um, this is our board team. We have 15 people, but this is uh, who's leading the organization. I'm the co-founder and CEO, and we have uh, Leo, Bruno, Thais, and Isabel in the board of directors. Uh, so in order to face such a huge challenge, we think we need to operate in a multidisciplinary way. Uh, so we work with journalism, advocacy, uh, trainings, and development of civic tech. Uh, we are the main reference for freedom of information in Brazil. Uh, we have um, a weekly column in the main newspaper of Brazil to talk about freedom of information. Uh, we've written editorials for all the major uh, newspapers, and we won all the prizes on data journalism, for the last five years. Um, we are part of the Council for Transparency and Combating Corruption of the Federal Government. Uh, we work with the Global Open Government Partnership Challenges in Brazil. Um, we are part of the Brazilian Parliamentary Front for Transparency and a lot of others. Um, I'm not going to talk too much about Fikin Sabendo, I'm going to talk about the cases themselves, but um, our work has been the basis for 10,000 exclusive news reports produced in the country. Uh, we ourselves have published over 2,000, and we have trained over 4,000 people around the country on how to use uh, our FOIA. So I probably should explain why does it look like I don't know how to write lie. Um, LAI is the acronym for FOIA in Brazil, and this is the name of our newsletter, which means you can't lie to us because we have FOIA in our hands. Um, and we have over 21 bills being processed in the National Congress. We have successfully approved two. One of them is to guarantee specific points of transparency for education statistics in every city and state around the country. So I'm going to talk about one of the main cases that we uh, led for over four years involving the judiciary, controlling agencies, uh, the Minister of Finance, and uh, a lot of other agencies. Basically, um, the Brazilian government had been paying for over 100 years uh, pensions for families of public servants, uh, including very outdated laws like um, single daughters which means that if you have if you're a woman you're like if you're a daughter of a public servant if you do not get married or work for the government then we'll pay you a pension until you die because you could not otherwise support yourself right um and that um so we're still working on that because we still need to, to get the pensions for the FBI of Brazil and will not rest until we do. But uh, we got a historical victory in uh, the main controlling tribunal of the country uh, to obligate the publishing of the pensions. It's important to say that not even the government knew how much it was paying uh, because it had different systems that they had never put together and had like, we're just giving a blank um, 
a blank check for this. Nobody really was looking at it. Nobody was talking about it. And we actually we were able to put this in the national uh, news ecosystem. Uh, so it's over uh, almost like it's 400 billion reais that was spent in 28 years with no public oversight. That's about like 78 billion dollars. Uh, so it's a lot of money. And uh, just a preliminary study done by the controlling agency right after uh, showed that our work is saving about 6 million reais a year. Um, and that's a lot bigger because it takes like a few years until people will fight in the justice system to maintain their pensions and stuff will probably get a lot more canceled. Um, it took about two years to get all of the data uh, after the controlling agencies told us that we had the right to access this data. Um, and we had to put over like 100 million uh, lines of payments uh, together, all like no pattern whatsoever. And we had to put together over three systems that were not talking to each other. And very importantly, um, when Brazil changed from a dictatorship to democracy only about 30 years ago um, the military was still in like had a lot of power so they managed to stay outside of the national payment system that goes through the ministry of finance and the oversight um, bodies which means that they were just spending the money they wanted the way they wanted and nobody had access to it and uh, a, a byproduct of this work was that uh, we like they ended up having to handle um, an, a system access to the controlling agencies. So not only this kind of stuff on pensions, but everything else they were spending on, we made them uh, give that to the rest of the government so there could be some oversight for the first time uh, since they were out of power. And it's funny because <laughs> out of the 300 billion uh, reais, we found five billion reais that were accounted wrongly. Uh, and then we work, so we say that like we, they hate us and they love us inside the government because we're willing to work with the good technical public servants and we help them fix the data uh, on the source. So not just our data set was correct, but the government's data set could be correct as well. Um, this involved uh, crowdsourcing. So first we put it, at this time, we had like absolutely almost no money. So we had volunteer programmers help us put together two different uh, programs, one in R, one in Python. And one of them, we opened to the whole public. And that's when crowdsourcing uh, played a really big role because um, the government had tricked us. They had put only like very old military personnel and not the, the ones like that are still alive. And then we started receiving thousands of DMs on our Twitter account saying like, hey, my stepmom receives a pension. She's not there. And it's funny because it was never my mom. It was always like my stepdad, my, uh, you know, my, my wife's mother, stuff like that. But they were just telling us they were not there. And that's how we found out because there was n we couldn't check this. There was no other source of information. So it was very important to get citizens involved. And then we got another system just for journalists because it was expensive. Um, in terms of numbers, like I said, it's about $70 billion, um, 95 million uh, unique payments made to only 500,000 people. And um, this was not being talked about. And then for two weeks in two different years, because we had the civil public servants and then the military people, because it took a, a while, we had to prove to them that Brazil only has three powers and not four. Um, and so military is part of the executive branch. It was a ridiculous conversation. Um, <laughs> and so we were headlining all the major newspapers in Brazil for a week, TV and everything that became um, discuss in Congress. And we showed, for example, that um, a few pensions were equivalent to all the um, cred cash transfer programs, the Brazilian very awarded program that supports 28 million people. And it's funny because for the past 20 years, the liberal newspapers have been talking about ending the cash transfer programs because it was too expensive, but nobody looked at the pensions. 
Um, so we do the complete process uh, because we do over 2,000 uh, FOIA requests a year. So we find out where transparency is not working. Then we denounce and complain to the controlling agencies. Then we have to make the government um, actually release the data. Then we review and correct the data. And then we're able to move public discourse because we have this newsletter that gets to over 20,000 journalists in every corner of the country. Um, and then we consolidate all the knowledge that we learn in this process in a portal called Wikilai. So it's like FOIA Wiki uh, that we did ourselves and then everyone else can do this in state and city level. Um, to focus on conflict of interest, we developed a tool and this is um, when I used to travel um, and say I'm from Brazil, people used to say like, hey, Pele, Carnival, Rio de Janeiro. And then since the last 12 years, they only asked me about corruption, um, which is not fun. Um, and then the Bolsonaro and Lula are complete opposites, but the one thing they have in common is we do not know what the hell they do in their time. Um, and so uh, we, there's no regulation for lobbying in Brazil, so we have no idea who's influencing uh, public policy. And that creates an environment of distrust, disbelief, and lack of accountability. And so we created uh, Agenda Transparente, which translates basically to like transparent schedule. I don't know. Um, and it's a tool, it's the first open tool in Brazil to start monitoring lobby in the country. Um, it uh, was inspired by uh, Transparency International Integrity Watch uh, that has all the EU uh, lobbyists registered, but for us it's much harder because there was no, there's no official record. So we're finding out who are the lobbyists for the first time, little by little. Um, so it used to be a painful process to access the official meetings. Uh, there's like one page for each authority with day by day. And that would be like journalists who have to spend the whole day pressing F5 on like hundreds of different pages um, and then consolidate this in PDFs and then share it. Um, so we created this tool where 10,000 authorities, all of the executive branch is in one easy tool that you can um, search. Uh, you can have uh, alert systems to journalists that are working in Brasilia know where they have to go to cover politics. And then you have a global search. So if you want to know who's talking about the Amazon, you can search at once at all 10,000 public authorities. You can filter, download, and see some dashboards. Um, some investigations that were done just saying that um, journalists really need this information, not only journalists, of course, but that's uh, who we talk to the most, but there's some research going on as well. Um, so talking about environmental protection and how lobby is linked, uh, we were able to support Reporter Brasil, is a really important uh, environmental protection uh, newspaper in Brazil. And we, sh we helped them show how the agribusiness was influencing uh, the executive branch to get a pesticide that kills a lot of like it's really prejudicial to bees which of course is necessary for the whole ecosystem and with that reporting we we're able to get this pesticide uh, to be nationally banned so that was really impactful um, and then I don't know if you heard about it but we had a humanitarian crisis with uh, an indigenous tribe um, they were like in a terrible situation. Bolsonaro, of course, didn't care. And Lula promised it would be one of his main focus. And he actually went there. There was a lot of buzz around it. But um, like you can see that after the buzz ended, they just forgot about the issue and never talked about it anymore. Uh, and the crisis is still going. Uh, we also monitor industry lobbying. So we showed, for example, how the industry, uh, the food industry is, um, the food industry is trying to influence the government to get, for example, tax exemptions for ultra processed food, which is just absurd. And then we're showing that the government met five times more with the corporations than with society and, you know, health um, organizations. 
we're also able to show that lawmakers are acting as lobbyists for companies, which is great. Uh, they go and they open doors, whatever the companies needs. We were able to show who is doing that the most in the energy sector, which is really important for environmental protection. Um, we also help them cover politics. For example, the U.S., I think is, and I think Britain is the country that bets the most and the betting industry is coming hard in Brazil and it's terrible. So we're trying to show how they're influencing. I'm going to go faster now, so come with me. Um, uh, we also show secret spending. So the government um, authorities have this corporate card. It's an actual visa card that they can use to do whatever they want. There's no oversight. Nobody knew what they were spending on. And then for the first time in history, we were able to get the data for the presidents in the last 20 years. And then we we're also able to access the actual, like, slips of every purchase to make sure, like, to see, for example, that Bolsonaro was buying, like, $50,000 in meat before carnival and jet skis and stuff like that. It was a lot of fun. Um, and it generated real impact, like, the... the um, the union's lawyers are asking for the money back uh, for a lot of wrongful spending. There was over uh, a thousand reports, news pieces published in only six months with this data, like journalists analyzing from different corners. And our newest historical victory is the state-owned company salaries, which have also never been published. Lula's main scandal was related to a state-owned company, and so we're looking forward to that. And here's my contact, uh, our website, and also a link to support our work. Um, thank you.